Hello everyone, so today I want to give five reasons for why I think that the Odin programming language is a great fit for game dev. So the first reason is that it has built in bindings for game dev libs that just work. And what this means is if we go to the Odin website and scroll down a bit, it says down here that there are batteries included and it lists a couple of libs that you might recognize that are good for game dev like SDL, Raylib, OpenGL, WebGL, Vulkan, DirectX, stuff like that. And what I mean here by just work is that, for example, if I want to use Raylib, which is a library for enjoying uh, video game programming, then in my Odin code, I would just say import uh, vendor colon Raylib and then it will compile and link Raylib into my stuff and it will just work. And we can look a tiny bit inside the Odin um, uh, compiler folder to see sort of what this vendor stuff is. So inside the Odin compiler folder here, we have a folder called vendor. And inside here, there is a folder called Raylib. And here we have uh, some different Odin files and we can uh, look inside raylib.odin here. This file is the one that specifies the bindings of the Raylib library. Uh, so Raylib is a C library and this thing is the thing that defines the bindings for it. Uh, and down here we see that uh, the Raylib.odin file actually says which extra linker flags to use and which things to link into the uh, final executable and it has the different uh, cases for Odin and Linux and you know, for Windows and Linux and uh, OS X and stuff. So this is why uh, you can just import something like this and then use uh, your functions from within Raylib to draw graphics and stuff and it will just compile and work. You will not have to fight with the linker, you know, put in like which libs to actually link into it. The second reason is that Odin is like C but less annoying and easier to learn. So just like C, Odin has structs and procedures operating on structs and you can allocate memory and you can do a bit whatever you want within that memory. It won't try to stop you. But unlike C, uh, you have a standard library that doesn't make me sad. <laughs> and then it also has things like generic. So you both have like uh, dynamic arrays uh, that can be of any type, which is something that C doesn't have built in. And uh, then you also have uh, generic function parameters or generic procedure parameters. So you can say that uh, you define a procedure that will take a value of any type with this dollar sign t thing here. Also, Odin has a concept of strings that does not use null terminated strings. The string knows how long it is. Uh, in C, it you know it puts a little zero uh, at the end of the strings, and then whenever it needs to know how long the string is, it will search the whole string to find that zero. Uh, you don't do this in Odin, and uh, I think it's a much better solution because I think uh, null terminate strings is one of the great design mistakes of C that has just propagated through history ever since. The third reason why Odin is so good for game dev is that it supports custom allocators. So we can look in this file over here. There is this object called the context here. The context is implicitly passed to any procedure that you call. And on the context, you can set an allocator. This allocator is, uh, it defines how the program will allocate memory whenever it needs to do so. And Odin ships with a few built-in allocators, but you can also make your own. The default allocator is very similar to use, you know, doing malloc and free in C. And uh, I think in game dev, I, I tend to see custom allocators a bit more than in some other areas. And I think that stems from the high performance demands of game devs uh, of game dev. I also mention tracking allocators here. Now a tracking allocator is an allocator that whenever a allocation happens, will wrap that allocation with some metadata so that your program can figure out where did allocation happen. And at the end of the program, it can look through the list of allocations. And if some uh, allocations haven't been freed, then it will scream that you have leaked memory. 
And uh, Odin comes with a built-in tracking allocator. And uh, here is sort of how you set it up. You you use the tracking allocator and you wrap another allocator inside it. In this case, I've wrapped the default allocator inside the tracking allocator. And then this one will later tell me if I leaked memory. I think this is a super way to make uh, manual memory management less scary because the number one thing people are afraid of when they think about manual memory management is that, oh, how will I know if I leaked something? Well, here's your answer. The fourth reason is that Odin is a low level language with what I call a high level language feeling. So, you know, a high level language is something like C sharp or JavaScript where you're far away from the hardware and it's uh, harder to make the program crash and do potentially unsafe things. Whereas low level languages like C are closer to the hardware, usually better performance, but uh, at the cost of uh, being more unsafe. And people usually see the low level languages as more boilerplate maybe or like yeah, it's just more code to do stuff and that's sort of why where i think that odin has a high level feeling unlike c there are no header files you just write the code and don't have to have these duplicate definitions of uh, functions and stuff and then like i mentioned there is uh, stuff like tracking allocators to make sure that you don't leak memory there is an optional bound checking of arrays so you don't go out of bounds that you can turn off in your release build because it slows it down slightly. And there is also like just nice things like, for example, if you have an array, uh, like if you say like, oh, um, V is a vec2 of uh, 1 and 2, then you can say V2 is a is V dot YX or XY. So you can do like, you can do XX or you can do XY. So you can do this kind of swizzling that you maybe recognize from high level shading languages. But you can do that in Odin as well. And there's just a lot of these small details that make the language, the, the code much more compact than C, the language easier to use. And I often feel like I'm programming in a high level language, but I still have that direct control over memory and the language is not trying to tell me not to do things. So the fifth and final point is that Odin has a non-precompiled and readable standard library. Whenever you import things from the standard library, like these imports here from the core library, uh, this code inside the standard library is actually compiled with your program. It is not pre-compiled. What this means is that this code is uh, lives within the compiler in a folder. So uh, in the Odin folder, you have the core folder here. And in there, you have all these different things. So if, for example, we import here the core strings folder. And that one lives down here. And then you can look into any of these files. And this is the contents of the strings.odin uh, file in the core library. And what you see here is that all this code is very readable. And what this means is that you can actually learn quite a bit about Odin from reading this code. And for game devs, I think game devs usually have a very, uh, they have a need for control. They want to know like how does the, uh, the function that uh, changes my arrays that puts uh, uh, objects into an array and how does the allocation stuff work and you know all those kind of performance sensitive things they want to know how does those work and you can just look in the source code and i actually have a trick uh, where i i put the whole core folder within my sublime text project so i can just jump to symbol uh, and here in this case i jumped uh, from to strings.clone in the uh, core library and i can see what it does if, I'm, if I want to experiment a bit with changing the functionality of the core library, I can copy this function out to my own code and change it. I could even, you know, change the code since it's not pre-compiled. I could even change the code in the standard library and just recompile. Maybe not so recommended to, to, to mess around too much in the standard library, but you can do it and uh, you can learn a lot from the looking at the code and you can modify it and it's all nice.
So those are five reasons for why I think Odin is a great language for game dev. Certainly not all the reasons, but it's the five reasons that I could think of from the top of my head. And yeah, so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.